Okay, we are live. All right. Good morning, Just everybody. Kidding. No, we're not. <laughs> we're not live. <laughs> we're definitely not live. Yeah. Uh, Armand had to go have a baby, so now we can't have a live stream. No, just kidding. We love you, Armand. <laughs> uh we, we should probably put some backup technical plans in place huh we're so bad we don't even know why we can't go live uh, I, I only know how to draw lines and triangles sir i can't <laughs> i can't run a live stream um armand's gonna be so bloody disappointed in us like it's gonna be like <laughs> disappointed father like sad that his like children couldn't figure it out on their own Ah, uh, i feel like a failure but let's do it we're still yeah. uh, we're still let's, here on a Friday. Let's do it. I yeah. How was yesterday? I missed all of yesterday. I mean, oh, I, wow. I I saw the recap when I got out of therapy. Um, so funny story. Funny story. So as as I as I alluded on the last podcast, I had a uh, I did an eight hour uh, MDMA plus ketamine uh, therapy session yesterday, which was uh, kind of wild. I'll I'll share more details about it on the uh on the pod next week i think um but before i left in the morning obviously i had to get on my computer and at the last second like initiate some rather large trades and i didn't <laughs> want to like babysit it right so what i did is i entered an, an uber levered long and then i just bought some puts just so that like i had fixed risk on the trade right and i was going to come back and reassess over the weekend whatever worst case i lose a couple grand or something and i move on with my life so i get there and i'm just about to kind of go under and i realize <laughs> that i didn't buy puts i sold puts well it's a good thing oh, that the God. nasdaq was up four percent by midday <laughs> So, oh my God. Uh, so I come to at like six, I drive home. It's like seven 30. I pull up my computer and I confirm that this is the case. The market has tanked. So I lost like a huge amount on my leverage long position because I made it bigger than normal because I thought it was hedged. And then my <laughs> option position was also way down because I, I sold the puts and I, I all of the Zen I had acquired throughout the entire day, like immediately washed away from me. And then I spent the next four hours on my laptop in bed, like buying a variety of dumb shit coins and just staring at charts. And it was it was so sad. So you needed to feel alive. Is that why you uh, made the trades prior to going into this therapy session? No, I have a problem. That's why I did it. I just, <laughs> I just have a problem. Um, was this therapy session uh, an attempt to address this problem or? Uh, I mean, I feel like a lot of the problems are interrelated, but yeah, this this would be a good one to, to put under the umbrella. <laughs> That's a hell of a backfire, my friend. Yeah, well, fuck. <laughs> you, old, you old fat finger. Damn. I have uh, I have repositioned into uh, long puts. We could talk about that in a bit. Uh, <laughs> how are you guys doing? What have you guys been doing? You making making any moves? Um, I'm preparing. I think to um, to take about twenty to twenty five percent of um, my like public equities growth portfolio and turn it into cash. Like I think we have like a clear room for you know our little transitory Goldilocks bull run that we talk about, and then there could be some triggers over the next like I don't know three to four months that might you know reset things, uh, whether that's like recession or Fed saying they're going to hike more or longer than the market expects or option flows, whatever you know we think it could be. Um, and uh, yeah, I just want to kind of, as we start this little pump and continue with it, I want to peel back some cash and just kind of manage risk a little bit. So I don't know when I'm going to do it. Probably probably sometime next week. I don't know. I might do it today if I have some time um, and give them a call to, to pull the trigger. But, you know, maybe 20, 25% next week. I don't know. Maybe another 20, 25% in April, May. We'll see just how, how things kind of progress. But I don't know if you guys saw that. Um, this jobs report came out this morning. So this is yes. uh, today's February 3rd. And I think like, I don't know, the market was anticipating like an increase of like, I don't know, 80,000, 100,000 jobs. It was an increase of half a million. 
So just crushed. Yeah, I the think the estimates. estimate was like 120,000. It came in. Okay. Like so yeah, it was million. really low. And then unemployment rate is currently at a 53 year low. So basically, just we're just zooming hard. The, the everything's open. You know, Goldilocks ha- has its like full case. We're growing. Inflation's coming down. So this this market could could continue to uh, to run and could be fun for the next uh, few months. We'll see. But at what but anyway, point that does jobs it, report was weird? I mean, this has to be like an indication that the Fed is not going to pivot anytime soon, right? At what point does that sort of reprice? Why is that an indication though? Because I, I feel like we 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 started with the Fed needs inflation to go down, right? And then in the fall, they started talking about the labor market because the labor market was sort of like a going to be a proxy for keeping like for CPI being high, if wages kind of kept going up. But if CPI is like actually dropping and dropping rapidly towards their targets, I don't think they have to crush the market just on the basis of labor because that was just a proxy for this other thing, which is now going down. So I don't know if it, like if I'm if I'm Jerome, you're like your mandate is like full employment and low inflation. And if you've got the full employment and the inflation's <laughs> coming down and you've just cranked for a year and you know that lagging effects are real, I don't know. Like I feel like you 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 ease off right now. Like why 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 wouldn't you? Right. Well, I mean, he, uh, here's the other case um, is that um, with people making positive real income, so we're at full unemployment costs are coming down or inflation isn't costs aren't increasing uh you see like a a reinflation situation um where people start buying again inflation pops back up because the economy is going into growth mode again and um yeah maybe he's just scared that uh you know like in the 1970s it took three or four cycles of this of of restricted monetary policy inflation coming back down inflation re-emerging more restriction. So I don't know. What do you think about that? Like, um, does that worry you at all? I think it's, I think now is different from the seventies. I think people like to compare them. Um, but they're, 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 they're different. Um, it does seem like we had this kind of one time shock because of COVID. Right. And it's plausible to me at this point that yeah, prices went up. Right. And they're not going to come down, but they won't keep going higher. That that's like very plausible to me. Um, and we're sort of we bull whipped pretty hard on a lot of consumer goods and like auto auto automobiles was like a big one that went absolutely moon status and then kind of came back down. What I suspect happens later this year is that we end up having a recession that is catalyzed by another energy shock. I think that is the most plausible scenario because the th- there's kind of two likely ways we get here. I think the first is what I what I just said with like a sort of energy shock, just like like if oil goes to four hundred dollars a barrel, right? Like the economy just shuts down. It like nobody can make anything anymore. We need energy as an input for the economy. It all just it all just shuts down, right? The other thesis is that like the Fed shuts it down because um you know inflation kind of roars back. Maybe maybe energy prices do kind of tick up, but not so much that they crush the economy and, and the Fed freaks out and they just hit, hit the brakes again. I, I think that's somewhat plausible. Um, and then the third scenario is just sort of some like black swan credit event, um, U- Ukraine war type thing. Like those are the things that are on my radar. But I I, I think that the first scenario is most likely. And I think all of them are likely to be delayed somewhat the one kind of weird thing about today is that it it is bullish and bearish and it depends on how you look at it right so it's bullish in the sense that we have a resilience economy maybe like you could parse this data in different ways i think um and inflation's going down ergo goldilocks and we go up um but the market has been pricing in heavily like cuts later this year right i think Bond market's been pricing in a couple cuts by the end of the year. Um, I think the data today makes those cuts go away because why are they going to cut if there's not going to be a recession? And if they're not going to cut, then rates tick up. And if rates tick up, is that bearish 
on equities in a sense. So not exactly sure how to parse that data. And this is kind of why I just like looking at charts for the most part, because I think it's like very, very difficult as a, as a normie to parse any of this data. And even the people who look at it with like kind of a lot of statistical models and way more rigor than we do are very confused right now. Like we both, like we both subscribe to, you know, the 42 macro research and they're mm -hmm. crunching data all day and their, their probabilities right now are like one third, one third, one third. We go right. up, we go down, we said, okay. okay. <laughs> but I, I will say, I like your, your first scenario where, um, or your hypothesis that like we have an inflate, um, sorry, like, a starts of recession due to some kind of like energy price increase. And I was actually thinking about, as I kind of peel off some of this cash, I was asking JP Morgan to do some research on some energy and industrial metal ETFs. So like just basic commodities, um, and see if I can maybe put a little bit of portion of that, uh, cash to work there in case of a reinflation scenario. So, so what, dri I, I like what that. drives that like big, uh, commodity spike? That's just like demand coming back online. Like yeah. I mean, if you look at like supply and demand, like we are, we are like in the hole in terms of oil, but you know, you also have to balance that with, well, if the largest world economy is going to go in recession, then demand goes down. And so which one wins? Is it, you know, China, uh, you know, reemerging and exporting that inflation in terms of energy prices to the whole world, or is the U S going to decline demand going to decline enough to kind of balance that out. And it's a tough one to say who wins, but it's well, certainly China reopening is deflationary in a lot of ways, right? Because we are just sort of expanding the capacity of goods in a lot of areas. Um, but not on energy, right? Like not I, on I energy, imagine. no, it's, yeah. it's certainly almost certainly, I think bullish energy. It's certainly bullish, like stuff like copper, I think, like I've been considering maybe putting on some trades there to kind of get out of my, you know, equities, crypto, um, and, and currency little, uh, cycle. Cause I don't I like I that don't industrial metal play, but maybe, maybe like, I don't know, halfway through the year, not, that feels a little too soon now, but, um, but yeah, I think, but, I think I like having a little yeah, you're right though. Like if China reopens and we think US recession is delayed, then the demand doesn't go away. And then China reopening has like and, and especially if they reopen and do the stimulus, which we've talked about, and they seem to have signaled that they're they're going to do. Um, you know, that they're kind of exporting stimulus to the world in a way. And that's that's gotta be a little bullish, at least until the so demand side goes away. Eric, I wanted to ask you, let, let's not talk about like what could happen six months from now. Like if we all are agreeing we're in a little transitory Goldilocks, like, so what do we do now? Like, um, and I thought about, you know, these are these weird moments typically when you see a pump and people are always like, well, should I, I missed it. So should I, should I come in a little more? You've played it a little like uh, surgical with some of the ways that um, you've made some investments. Do you care to share a few of those? Because I think you shared them in past pods and they're they're doing pretty well yeah so i think that's a good way to to frame it it's like if you have a, a macro view and mine's mine's changing right now right even as we speak I, i'm starting to realize that i'm looking at this thing as like this like short-term scam pump and i think it might be if you like zoom out but this thing the scam pump might last longer than i was imagining um i was playing it like the the chem time frame through like mid-february and um you know, it's, it's seeming like there's, there's longer legs, uh, to this, to this runway. So I, I'm it, then the next, the next, uh, way I'm thinking is like, okay, well, how do you play that the thesis? Um, like what's the best way to express that view. And when we were talking, uh, you know, early January or maybe late December, and we were talking about going bullish, um, you know, I remember talking us all together, asking Rizzy, like what, what's the best way to express a view like that? And I think Steven has mentioned that some of the, the things that have pumped the hardest have been like low float or like low, low market cap type stuff that typically highest beta stuff goes, goes the highest for me, it was, um, using leverage on things that are already leveraged. So like that, that TQQQ is like a triple leverage NASDAQ. It, that thing's up like 40%, but I was doing options on top of that. So those are up like 700%. <laughs> um, 
I, I'm thinking Can you explain about why you would do something like that. Like, is it, you're not just being full degen, you're, you're doing it since for some form of capital efficiency, right? Or, yeah. or no. Yeah. And basically it's like, if, if, I, if my view is that I want to go long, like what's the best way to go long? What's like the, the highest ROI. And for me, it was, it was that, but you know, you don't, you don't call them all correctly. I think what I'm looking at now is, um, also considering, you know, what, what things are like really heavily shorted. Um, it was like all the shit that I was short and now considering, um, going long those like, uh, you know, Silvergate is something that I, I had brought up to you guys before. And that thing's up, like that thing's up massively and still has 50%, uh, short of float. So like I was even looking for, uh, sort of like one month options contracts on, on SI and like people are, are bidding like SI is trading like 20 bucks. People are bidding a hundred dollar strike prices on that next month. So like, it's something that, Whoa. that could really moon. Wow. That's something I'm thinking about. Like normally I would sell wow. options like that. Wild, but, wild looking yeah. chart. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Wild. This is a crazy chart. Um, so I'm huh. thinking about, so Silvergate is the crypto bank yeah. that I imagine FTX used a bunch of exchanges have, have used at some point. Sailor uses it to get leverage on his Bitcoin, et cetera. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, negativity surrounding that name, um, obviously. I think they're exposed to some nasty shit plus regulatory. Yeah, but, there was a investiga fraud investigation launched on them yesterday, right? Yesterday, yeah. Yeah. But the stock's up massively today. It's still um, up today. Yeah, I mean, that that's that's a sign, right? When there's bad news and stuff is kind of pumping anyway. Right. Uh, I really like this as a trade because you have such a clear invalidation on the downside here. Like, what is this thing trading at? Like $19? Yeah. Yeah, 20 bucks. Yeah. I can't screen sh uh, share uh, my screen, by the way, because you, uh, you have it disabled. So oh. maybe, I would like uh, to allow... check that so that people can get the lines later. Um, Techno screen strike again. But yeah, when I look at the Silvergate chart, like it's very plausible to me that this thing can go to 60 in a hurry and we're at 20 and the downside is like 12. I, I mean, that's a, that's a really good risk reward. Um, I'm trying to wow. allow you to share and it says that all participants can share. Really? We're well, so now bad. I can. We're so bad at this. So, <laughs> yeah, we're just, just regular... Uh, the tech podcast right here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we're one of our rankings is in tech news, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I got speaking of tech, I got a call in coming from Meta here. I'm gonna not answer that. Um, nope. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this thing looks really good to me. I mean, I see like a Really nice kind of deep accumulation range over there on in in you know 2020. We kind of tested that and kind of panic broke through it in 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 January, like kind of full fear mode towards the end of the year here. And we kind of recovered, we kind of recovered that move. Like we dumped from we dumped from 22 all the way down to 11, like right below that range, and then recovered it. So you could consider this to be um a, a deviation move here right when you get this kind of move under critical support and then reclaim it these are really nice setups because you have a really obvious place where you're wrong like you can go long here let me get the long thing out yeah so like you can you can go long here at 20 and like this seems like a very plausible target up here at like 63 or so and even if you set your stop down at like 10 below that consolidation, like this is a four and a half to one risk reward trade. Um, it's really good. And you might even be able to be really aggressive and say like, I'm just going to set it below the, the top of the range that we broke down initially and then reclaim because we're probably not going to break down there again. And if you do that, you get like almost a 10 to one trade. So I like this a lot, Eric. I am uh, and I think probably like, going to take I it. The way that I would express it is like through options, like buy yeah. way out of the money, dog shit options. <laughs> They're 
cheap. Can I ask you a question about that? Yeah. Like why why buy way out of the money options versus currently in the money options in a scenario like this? Um, it gives you the convexity, you know, like if you're like at the money and this thing really zooms, um, the Delta is like one, it, it basically moves in line with the, the underlying, but when you're buying out of the money stuff, as it gets closer, you, you see like way bigger price appreciation. And as it gets closer are, to the yeah. strike price. Yeah. Yeah. Options are tricky too. Like you have to kind of be aware of how much exposure you have to volatility vega versus price movement delta like if you buy really long dated options like they have a tremendous sensitivity to volatility um and maybe not as much to like movement in the underlying price so if you're betting on a price move then yeah you want to kind of make sure you're not accidentally gonna get rugged by like a, a volatility bet that you didn't think you were actually making um one of the nice things about the the deep out of the money ones is they are really capital efficient because of how how cheap they are. Um, like if you buy just at the money calls right now, it, you're going to have very pure exposure to to delta, like just the price movement. But they're going to be more expensive, and you're going to have to uh, set more of your account side on it. Um, this is something I'm still trying to figure out actually, because I you know I'm just I know just enough to be very dangerous to myself with options, as we learned earlier. Um, but I really like them in TradFi because we don't have perps. And I want to, I want to, I want to do that. Like I want to make this trade, but I don't want to put like half of my brokerage account on one trade to get exposure to a move that might be like one or 2%. Like this isn't really a good example of that. Um, but a move I made yesterday was to go like, I, I, I pulled an Eric and I, I went uh, long the ultra short uh, with ultra short uh, Euro. All That's right. That. So we were talking about, Eric and his uh, his desire to go long by longing the options of the the triple levered thing, which I which I love. So I I pulled that trade off yesterday as well, and I did it on the ultra short euro. And the reason I did that, and I I I did this on an earlier stream as well, where um, I was kind of mark, marking out a level on the 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 Dixie that I was really concerned about. And it's, it was this level here at uh, around 101.3. And we had some other kind of minor weekly support, a little higher than that. Um, but I was kind of concerned coming into this move towards the bottom because we had this kind of, we, we've had this divergence kind of going on where we're kind of making lower lows in the dollar, but the RSI is, is not making lower lows. So it's this kind of steady buildup of, you know, pressure at the bottom there. And once we kind of got this break below the low and reclaimed yesterday, um, paired with a move that we, we ran some critical highs on the, the S and P that I had marked out as well. I had said this was going to be a get out of Dodge signal for me. And I exited like all the, the kind of perp longs I had in crypto and I ended up playing this trade by going um, long the ultra short euro because the you know, U.S. dollar index is it's mostly a it's mostly a euro trade anyway, and the euro chart actually was setting up pretty well uh, as well. So I got a nice move off of that today, uh, which has been really nice, and I think it's kind of a good a, a good hedge for the portfolio right now. I'm I'm kind of confused because I am pretty midterm bullish still on risk, but this is just sort of like objectively bad. So I'm wondering if we just get a, like a big shakeout here, maybe kind of rinse some of the late FOMO longers and, and, and then we get a chance to kind of go up only again for a bit. That's my hope. Um, I, I sold the puts on Ethereum too, because Got all these drawings on here. <laughs> it's like, wow. Yeah. You're, you're a it's beautiful a mess, But yeah, here on the daily, I mean, I had talked a couple of streams ago about how I was worried about this little formation here. We had one, two, three drives. And then we had kind of, again, progressively, progressively like lower highs in the RSI there. This is a, this is a divergence. You're making higher highs in price and like lower lows in the strength of the uh, lower highs in the strength of the move. Um, 
look what we got going on here now. Like we've actually kind of completed that move. We've got the, uh, with the one, two, three higher highs. And then the RSI is just lower, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high. So this looks kind of scary to me. Um, the other thing that looks scary to me is the daily candle we printed yesterday. I mean, like, look at this thing. It is just gross. Like you get this what did it huge get up to? push up, huge wick. Just listening. Yeah, it is a it, it's a candy with a very tiny body at the bottom and a huge wick at the top, right? So price pushes up during the day, takes out a bunch of stops, people get on, and then it it doesn't hold those highs and it comes all the way back down. Um, that is not a that is not a great thing. Um, so can I ask you a couple of questions here? Because like as a non-technician, yeah. uh, I, I don't like follow the charts like you do. Like when I see the RSI kind of come down like that. Like my thought is that it's like resetting, like so that it, it gives you more of a runway to to pump higher. Is that the opposite of of what I should be thinking? No, not necessarily. Like there is a point where this kind of consolidates for a long time. Like if this RSI just gradually goes down to 50 and we're still consolidating here, then you have to downgrade the probability that you're gonna get some nasty move down, right? I think you get these nastier moves down when you have these just rapid periods of exhaustion and there's just suddenly nothing there, right? So if price cools down for a while, then that can simply be a trend. Like this stuff isn't, it's just not black and white, right? Like there aren't no easy answers here. You're just kind of weighing a bunch of data points. And what I see is I see a rising dollar. I see weakness in stocks. I see a critical high that we sort of ran here failed to hold above we then ran that high again and again failed to hold above it like the high i'm talking about is this high we had here in in, in november right before the ftx collapse like That's kind like of a 16, critical 1670 on the ETH point, price right right and actually uh yeah so we we kind of barely nicked it in the initial move up and then we made a big move above it yesterday and did not hold above it as well so if we kind of closed down here again like i, I don't know this looks it it, it looks it looks like a bad place to be like adding to longs at the very least. Um, but I, you know, I hedged a little bit and, and, and my game plan is to, is to probably buy, like, I, I talked about this on a, a couple of streams as well. Like we just have all of these like untapped lows just sitting here with like a big gap below that's never been tested in, in price. It's not a given that you're going to get like a big liquidation wick, right? But this is the setup. You've got very persistently high funding. People are long. People are FOMOing. People are on, on leverage. You've got all of this liquidity built up here because you've got all these st like traders play stops here. They play stops here. They play stops here. They play stops here. All these bottom ticks on the chart. That's a place where people like to place their stop losses, right? So until the market goes to them, there's presumably a lot of traders sitting here with stop losses. So. If you get a critical breakdown in the market, maybe it's because of news or something, you know, some little catalyst or whatever ignites the spark, you can get one of these big candles that goes whoop and just kind of wipes us out and maybe takes us, you know, below 1500. Um, and what I'd be watching for is like a run of the 1500 levels and, and, and then maybe we sort of kind of reclaim in here and then, okay, maybe we're just sort of back in this. This is just like a reaccumulation range and I can kind of go long again at 15. Um, the next thing would be like we lose this and we kind of break down and then we go to these 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 sort of like uh 1420 ish area that I was uh talking about on stream a couple of weeks ago is like a really prime spot to to get long if you have the ability to to do it. Um but 1420 would be like a really nasty move. I mean, that would be 15% down from here and uh you know, 18% down from the top. That's certainly not out of the question in ETH moves. That's right in the that's yeah, probably only like a one standard deviation move in ETH, uh, maybe two. They happen a lot, um, and that would that would wipe a lot of people who got like long and, and levered up here. And 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 I think be very very healthy. Like I would love to see that, and then I would love to see some demand, and then maybe we kind of go back up again. That's what I'm really hoping for. I like that. Yeah. I, I think that type of move would uh it would, it would align nicely with uh, Chem's idea of fund fund flows turning bearish um, in the next week or two. Mm -hmm. and, and and what's really going to screw me is like if we actually do reclaim like this level this this like 1680 level and just <laughs> push up like you know maybe that was enough of a rest 
and the market's so bullish that we we do that. I, like the the system I use doesn't say to go long here. It says to take off risk. It says to you know I'm even considering shorting based on the 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 recent you know price action of ETH. But I, I I've got the puts right now and I've taken some you know spot exposure off. So I I think I feel pretty um, cushy. I think zooming back out, right? Like you zoom back out on on stocks. This still looks really good to me. Like this looks like an inverted head and shoulders, which is a pretty bullish pattern on 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 such like a huge time frame. And you could say that there's some kind of support here, maybe around uh, this is S and P, right? So. Yeah, like this. This is like a pretty key level here, like around. Um, What's the price? Four thousand seventy-one or so, or four thousand ish, right? This would be like a healthy pullback. Like if we kind of pull back and then retest here, this is sort of like the neckline and flip this as support. This would be great. Like this would be great. Like so, nasty move down, maybe fake out and come back above. That gives us enough time to bleed out, check out some crypto. People start freaking out, but then we just kind of come back above here and push onward and upward. Like this. I just don't see a reason to be bearish on this chart. You know, we've pretty heavily flipped the magic diagonal. Um, maybe in like a really nasty scenario, we 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 come back down and and tap that huge diagonal line everybody's been talking about. That would be pretty scary, but it would still form like a higher low here on a higher time frame. So I still think you have a a good setup to get long. So it does it does look good to me. The only big question mark for me right now is the dollar and what's going to happen there and, and how much it still matters in, in crypto. I mean, but, but historically it has mattered a lot, you know? I like that setup. Um, there's no, I looked in the calendar, there's no big, like, uh, you know, upcoming data releases or announcements in the next week. So, um, you know, the market's kind of clear to do what it may over the next week or two. Um, I think the next thing coming up is probably like a January CPI, February, mm -hmm. like 14th ish. So something to keep an eye on. Um, Stephen, yeah. what's your take on like that, um, that spike that happened in August, you know, up to like 40, 42, 50 or something. Um, like, do you think that would be a place where we, we see some resistance as we look to recapture that level on this little pump? I mean, it looks like a great place for a short idea because I see, I see some, we did already, we had some kind of equal highs back here in, in way back, um, in April and that August pump, you can see like ran those equal highs. This was like such a, this was like a mint short setup, like for, for people looking at the chart you should because this is great like so we came up we ran these two equal highs into this kind of fair value gap here right and then tapped the mega trend line and then got back down below <laughs> like we don't have price action like this in crypto like look how clean this price action is it basically goes up takes the highs taps the <laughs> it taps the moving average it taps the trend line it comes right back down and just nukes. Like that's so beautiful. <laughs> like what a beautiful <laughs> setup. Um, so I would be watching for something similar. Like it is possible to kind of like run this high here and get back below. This is going to be a trouble area around like 40, 43, 50 or so. Um, can worry about that when we get to it. Um, but flipping that into support would be like kind of like a really big thing for me then like, I don't know, we could just, sky's the limit at that point. But yeah, that's my next kind of watch, watch point if we are able to hold here. I like it. Right, um, cool. Steven, I know you need to run. I think we all need to run. So why don't we wrap up here? Um, if you're listening uh, on a podcast app, definitely check out the YouTube channel. You can see uh, Steven play Picasso on charts. Um, at alphapod.com <laughs> and check out the channel, subscribe. Um, otherwise, uh, come check out the Discord. And a reminder, if you're going to be in Denver, free Denver, we're going to do a little shindig. It'll be fun. Um, let us know if you're coming in the Discord, if you'll be there, come hang out with us. 
Uh, I believe we're going to do something on March 2nd, which is a Thursday. Just a little happy hour hangout, and we'll love to see all your uh, beautiful faces in real life. And uh, on that, anything else, boys? No. Well, I'm just excited to get back to being live eventually. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. I'm sad too. I had a lot of, I actually have some interesting stuff here to talk about. I really wanted to talk about the, uh, like I, I got uh, me and Carne Asada Chris went long another AI shit coin last night. Uh, <laughs> is it a CAI? It is, some, uh, some, it is CAI. I yeah, like I saw some activity in there. Yeah. Already up uh, four. I looked at, it was really funny. Uh, it had like, it's like 400 K in liquidity and like $3 million in trading volume yesterday. <laughs> So whoever's uh, LPing that is making a, a small fortune in trading fees. Maybe that's actually yeah. the uh, the alpha in that. But yeah, we can talk about that a little more next time. Um, these things are all going to zero. These are all just like people putting <laughs> yeah. skins on open soft uh, open source software and and slapping a and slapping a a, a token on them. You know. Um, oh, I actually have it up here. Yeah. <laughs> these things are all. Oh, this is another one. This is Chimpify. Chimp of Chimp of AI. <laughs> I bought this one because it was the lowest market cap coin with AI in the name that I could find. And that was my investment. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. I love that. <laughs> I, I like, love that man. I put, I put a really tiny bag into it, but yeah, this thing, the CAI thing is, uh, it's pumping hard today. I actually nailed the, uh, almost Pico bottom last night at around like six cents. So, um, wow. this, pretty happy. Uh, so hopefully this, uh, this therapy this, did nothing for you. Yeah. This is <laughs> so aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully this uh, ADSC continues a little longer, and uh, I don't I, I don't come back next week, and uh, and, and I'm sad. But I, I did already take um, I am already locked in for a gain on the uh, Imagine AI uh, play. So we're we're just we're just free rolling the nonsense from here, boys. I backed uh, I backed out my original as well, my original investment, and just uh, letting it ride, letting the profits ride, yeah, free it, rolling, let it ride, yeah, free roll. Let the let the gods uh, let the gods cast the dice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right boys. boys. Good Let's times, wrap it boys. there. I will uh, see you soon. I will see you guys Alrighty. on Wednesday at the happy hour. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Adios. Later.